Welcome to this edition of our YouTube channel, Ethis Hangout. Today we are going to talk about why is God hiding? Another way we phrase this idea is the argument from divine hiddenness. By the way, my name is Doka Soita. I am an atheist and I look forward to sharing my ideas with you this afternoon. What informed this question? Why is God hiding? I have been a Christian all my life until roughly two and a half to three years ago. When I was a Christian, I remember I was single for a very long time. There were many prophecies by pastors who were telling me, you are going to meet your Mr. Right. <laughs> He's right around the corner. He shall locate you <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so there I was waiting and waiting for this Mr. Right to come. He did not. I went and talked to my spiritual parent. We used to have those in the church. And she advised me to fast. She gave me a formula. She told me that I have to do it for 21 days, that I have to cut off television. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to eat only certain foods. But then after I did all of that, there was no response. I was met with nothing more than crickets. And, 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 and there have been many incidences. In fact, the turnaround moment for me was with regard to my illness, which I have had from the time I hit my 20s. And I've been praying constantly over that illness, but alas, there was no response. So I started asking myself, why is God silent? Where is he? Why is he hiding? Why is he hiding from me? And that informed this discussion today because we hear it from Christians, from, from religious people, from faiths who still adhere to the belief that God exists. They tell you that God is there. God is there, but he's hiding. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I would want to know from the attendees today of examples of a hiding God, right? What would make you say from your observations of the world around you that God is indeed hiding? If at all, he exists. Uh, of course, we know he does not, but from their perspective as Christians, um, we, 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 we look at it that way. He's hiding. So. What examples would you give on that? <clears throat> Why is God hiding? Uh, one of the assumptions that, uh, based on what you've said, the assumption, the reason why people think God is hiding <clears throat> is because people think God is speaking to someone else or God is speaking to everybody else except themselves. And it's because of this, let me call them charlatans, and people call them pastors, <clears throat> who will come and tell you, God told me, God wants you to be like this. God expects you like this. God uh, revealed himself to me. What that does, if you don't have a, a, a consciousness to realize that these people are lying, what will that happen is think that God is hiding from you because of your sinfulness, because you are not worthy, but he's revealing himself to everybody else. And that's why everybody else is giving you stories of how they have experienced with God one on one. Yet you, you're doing what you thought that would make you have an experience one-on-one -on -one with God. And it's not showing up. So I think that's a big factor where people lie. No, let's, let's not sugarcoat it. Where people lie that they have been sent by God. Or God has uh, revealed themselves to them. Sometimes it's not lying. Sometimes people have experiences like weird dreams. Like, you know, there are they're, they're various mental problems or uh, not just mental but psychological disorder so people might experience something especially if you go in the nature and relax 
But the problem is they want to interpret that because they already have a bias toward this is a God. People want to assume this is God. Like you could, you've seen people saying they have seen God, Jesus' face on the toast. People saying they have seen Jesus' taste on, they splashed salt on the table and they just saw Jesus' image there. Or some people saw a certain lighting when it was lightning and they looked like Mother Mary of Jesus. Because they already have a bias of how, first of all, there's no way you can know how Mother Mary of Jesus looks because you've never seen Mary, Mother of Jesus. So the fact that there is a, an image that has been fed to you and now you're trying to match this image to that one. That is, the, that is where now you normally see people telling you, God revealed himself to me, God showed to me. And then now for you, who have not had that experience, you get that inferiority complex like, what am I not doing right? And the problem is when you consult your spiritual leader or your whatever, they're not going to tell you the reality, which is these people have an experience, they interpreted it this way, but we don't think it's actually God talking to them. They're going to be like, oh yeah, this is God talking to them. The problem is you pray harder, fast, do this, blah, blah, blah. And you know, that reinforces your fear or your sense of insecure, spiritual insecurity. Where you're like, God, what, what, what do I do? And then at that point, and you know, them, um, at that point, most likely there's something you're chasing. And it's normally the thing you're desperate about. If you don't have school fees, they will reveal that school fees is about to be delivered. If you don't have money, they will reveal. If you're looking for a marriage partner, that's what that, the problem you are having is the solution they are going to come with, to come up with. This thing you've been praying about. And that's why you hear pastors making general argument in uh, crusades. Mm. I, can, I, I can see someone who has been praying for something here. I, God has shown me there's something you've been praying about. You no, know, they have no idea. You know? But they know, of course, everybody in that crowd, they, everybody has something they would want to change in their life every day. Like today, maybe you'd want a marriage partner, you'd want financial success, you'd want... Um, uh, to get healed, there's something you'd want to solve to be, and now they want to know what problem is that, and then they can make advantage of that to, to make it uh, you believe that they talk to God about your problem. You know, the way you hear, like, if two doctors, you've been having a disease, and the two doctors told you, but I've been talking to another doctor about your disease, and I think we have a solution. The way you'd feel so nice, now that's the same feeling they feel like. I talked to God, God told me about your disease, and now God wants you to heal me, to heal you. Yeah. Just give me 20,000, you know, that kind of argument. And uh, uh, so that, that, that's it for now. Yeah, I'll give a good example of uh, hiding God. I'll just say um, six things. Mackenzie, 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 Griffy, Griffy, Shaka Hora, Okay, examples of a hiding God, I think I, I, I hide a God, I see a hiding God every every other day. Because uh, right now, in Kenya right now, it's rainy, it's in a rainy season. And then this rainy, in a rainy season, we, we get in some places where uh, the rains become extreme and people experience flooding, the same people who have been praying to God for this rain. The rain comes and then they experience flooding and they they, they die of this flood. Or, or, uh, they, they die or, or their properties get destroyed with this flood. Where, where was this God uh, hiding when his own followers were dying of this flood or were, their properties were being destroyed with this flood? Um, so people hide when there's something to hide. Say, for example, God used to perform miracles, then suddenly the cameras were invented, then, oh my God, I'm not doing it anymore. Ah. <laughs> so, in the same way, just like in real life situations, if people are real and honest about who they are, they don't hide it. Like, I used to have, let me just give this example. I used to have a boyfriend back in 2012. He used to tell the whole world, this is my girlfriend, this is my wife, this is what you get, because he had nothing to hide. But people who have something to hide, hide. Who have something to hide they will always like edit that part out because they want to give an impression of what is not there so this god if he's actually there if he's actually performing miracles he shouldn't be afraid to show that like why hide that if you really love humankind you really you're showing that you can perform miracles and ish then do it like like don't be afraid of what people will say why are you afraid of what you know what humankind and you're the one who created them will say like why are you hiding like just 
just show it, make it make sense. If you're powerful, then we'd not need to debate this because we'd see it, you know? So, yeah, that's my thought process. With, uh, God is hiding, according to the, some people, but it's some Christian or some believer, they think God is not hiding. It's just an invisible and undetentable. And, and so, to them, they feel God is answering their prayer. It's only that when he comes to them, they cannot be able to see him because it's invisible or undetentable. So to them, to majority, they see God is not hiding. Because to them, they think God is answering their prayer the time of need. And when they, he fails to answer their prayer, they, they claim he has another plan for them. Or maybe that if he could be able to answer that prayer, could it cause some problem to them. That is why they try to give those reasons. So that is how they came. But it was, it was skeptic, skeptical or agonistic or atheist. We just say, if God is there, he should prove to us that he is it, instead of hiding. Because for us, we don't know whether it's invisible and detentable. So we need a proof. And if it's in, invisible and, and detentable, it's the same quality of nothing. So we can say God is nothing, does not exist. If there is no any qualification or any characteristic of him apart from characteristic of nothing. So for us, if he exists, let's stop hiding. Let's prove to us through performing miracle or making this my phone to move from this point to the other point. And that will be a proof that it's not, it's moving the phone without <laughs> hiding. And not to use any person. Because some people, they, for example, you may pray for a certain help. Yes. I, need, I need the money. I need to pay my rent. Then a person randomly come from nowhere and give you money. Because in you, you have a problem. So you end up thinking, it's God who has sent that person. Why can't he come and drop the money? You see the money there without anyone. And then you confirm, you see there is no any trick. There is no magic trick there for you to confirm whether it's, to know whether it's God, but not any other person. So even if it's invisible, he can be able to prove to us in an easy way, because we know, according to his definition, he can be able to perform miracle. Why can't he perform miracle without seeing him? And that will be proof, it's not hiding. So what's my example of hiding God? I, you know, my example of hiding God is the God of children. Eh? Um, on average, between 8 to 10 million children die every year before they attain the age of 5 years. Um, last year it was a bit low, and the other year, because of COVID, uh, COVID made people wash their hands, and then number one killer for children is diarrhea, so diarrhea was low. But on average, if you took the last 10, 20 years, five, uh, 8 to 10 million children died because of, um, before they attained the age of 5. About 5 million died due to preventable diseases, especially number one, diarrhea, but two, malaria. So, <clears throat> the question I normally ask myself is, <clears throat> God loves children. Even if you are to, there's no scripture that, okay, a scripture that, uh, like Bible that uh, advocates for the killing of children, if you look at the, uh, not all, what do you call it, the one in, no, the one in, uh, Amalekites. No, the one in Egypt where uh, God was sent to uh, the all this, oh, the, the first God, the Passover. The Passover, yes. you know, where God goes to see the, the firstborn. But ideally, we believe children should be protected. Right. So, number one, who is this God? What is God's plan with these kids? Because me, you can say, okay, I've sinned, maybe that's why I'm suffering. But what about kids who are below five years, who have to die in that land? What God, what plan does God have for these kids? <clears throat> uh, and number two, uh, did God, if God, God was, if, you know, there's something called divine plan. If God has a plan for everybody, what plan did God have for these kids? Like, was it his plan all along that I'm going to send you down there? You're not going to finish for even five years. I'm <laughs> going to send some diarrhea there. I'm going to send malaria here. I'm going to send you quasi out and you came here direct from here. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> you see, that, that kind of thinking, like, why would, God, why would a God do that? Now, the inverse of the other side where you see the hiding is, there are a lot of kids who make it in life. 
There are a lot of kids who are who are healthy. And we seem to attribute that to God. We seem to thank God for that. We seem to say, God, I'm a couple of total, we come, we celebrate, I'm a fit, uh, he's past um, his O level, his A level, that is God. But when these 10 million are dying, oh, that is not God. Yeah. God has to choose. He cannot have his cake and eat it. I don't know if God is a baker. That is <laughs> But you cannot have his cake and eat it. <laughs> you cannot, it's either if you are responsible for the success of the millions of kids who make it in life and become scientists in America, you are responsible for the 10 million deaths. And this brings me to the hidden parts whereby things just happen. People will die, people will live, things just happen. It is humans who attribute meanings to this earth. We think God is punishing us by killing kids. We think God is rewarding us by, by making this kid grow nicely. And that God only need to come out and say, okay, guys, this thing for the day not I don't. I'm the one in charge. Boom, boom. You get it? Mm. Yeah, so that's the hiding God who, who kills children in silence. Thank you all for those examples that you have given of a hiding God. Uh, we have heard of the cult example and... Um, if God was visible and detectable, cult leaders would go out of business immediately. There would be no natural disasters, the floods that exist. He wouldn't let that happen. There would be no illnesses, especially among the most vulnerable among us who are the children, right? Uh, God would do something about it. But most importantly and most obviously, why can't we see him? Why can't we see him? Why can't we touch him? Why can't we hear his voice, right? That is a direct indication that God is hiding. Now, there are some believers, especially Christians, because that is the background where we, most of us come from. There are some Christians who acknowledge that God is indeed hiding. They acknowledge it, but they give justifications. They have their reasons. So one example that they like to give is mysteries. They say that God has a way of doing things in a mysterious way and we can't understand it. So that's one reason that they give. What other reasons have you heard from believers on why God is hiding? So let's remember that this is one category of believers who, who acknowledge that God is indeed hiding. But then there are others who deny that God is hiding. We'll examine that subsequently. But for now, let's stick to the ones that admit God is hiding. <coughs> one of the funny things I've heard is uh, the reason you cannot see God is because if you saw God, you die. <laughs> if you saw God, you die. I'm like, I will die anyway. I'll, I'll pay a small, dying is a small price to pay. <laughs> and you see, it's funny how people revolve around that topic, you know. And and you guys are laughing. The person who normally says this, they are really serious. Like, they really mean it. Like, if you saw God with your face, nobody has ever seen God. I'm like, okay, so how do you guys believe it? Um, the other thing is they say the only person who saw God was Paul during the Damascus experience. And now I'll ask, if God, if, God if, the, if, if Paul was good enough for God to reveal himself to him, what about the rest of us? Remember Paul, what was doing before he had the Damascus experience? Mm -hmm. He was persecuting and killing Christians. Right. I've not even done a quarter of that. I've not killed anybody. Mm -hmm. Why am I not having my own Damascus moment? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you see, the problem is they want you to believe that God exists, not by seeing him, but because Paul saw him. Right. The only person who should believe that God exists is Paul, because he's the one who saw him. Mm -hmm. Me, I never saw him. <laughs> if God wanted me to believe he exists, he would reveal to myself the same way he revealed to Paul. Mm -hmm. So this hiding and revealing to some people, of course we know uh, Paul or Saul had some, you know, uh, epileptic, some problem there, but we will not go into details. But that's the point. The fact that they say you cannot see God because he's going to kill. Yet some people saw him who are very sinful, according by the Bible, who are persecuting Christians. It is, the, the Damascus event should be good and sufficient for everybody on this planet. And then now they can make the decision. Should I believe? Should I not? 
but they should be have that evidence instead of hiding and acting like oh i revealed myself to so and so then that that was on that believe not me before the next person speaks thank you for giving us an excuse and how you'd respond to it i gave the excuse that christians give but i didn't uh, say how i respond to it so the excuse they give you is mysteries that some things are mysterious and you cannot understand it with your human mind and i would say that is very destructive <clears throat> thinking because if you believe something based on ignorance you are engaging in a logical fallacy you can justify anything under the sun based on mysteries yeah any evil any immoral thing that happens you can justify it by saying oh those are mysteries somebody raped a child and then you say oh you see you can't understand his mind it is those are mysteries you should never believe anything based on mysteries. The time to believe something is when there's evidence. So that's how I would respond to them. Somebody else with some reasons that they have had? Yeah, there's something I keep, uh, they keep saying, and it is in the Bible. It says, blessed are those who believe without sin. Then it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So I've also had uh, some Christians uh, saying about uh, God has, uh, is hiding because he, he, has let, he, he has left humans, he has given humans the free will to do what, uh, what they, they want to do. But now the question is, if God has given us the free will to do what you want to do, why do you pray? Why do you pray? Huh? If God uh, if, if, if he has given you the, the free will, he has given humans the free will to do, what they want to do and he, he, he doesn't get involved. So what do you pray? Why, why, why do you pray? <laughs> if he has, a, he had, he has a, a plan for everybody, why don't you just let, him, let uh, God do what? <laughs> why, don't you, <laughs> why don't you let God do what, what he has planned for you and, uh, and quit uh, trying to pray and trying to change his, his will. He, yeah. The biggest irony I find is that we have free will, but he's omniscient, so he already knows everything the way it's supposed to happen. So this shoot was supposed to happen, and <laughs> everything we're saying was supposed to happen, so nobody should actually interfere because we're doing God's will. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if he has a divine plan, how would you have a divine plan if you already know that this person would choose this route over this route? Like, make it make sense. To wonder about the free will, so according to the definition of all religion, God is, is all-knowing, so he knows everything. And according to the Bible, where I was experienced in, Bible say God knew you before you were born. And in fact, in the book of Ephesians say, God knew you before he created the world. <laughs> and sometimes he say, I, I control people to do what I want. I hand in some, and I show favor or mercy to some, according to the Roman chapter 9 and the Roman chapter 11, verse 32. So you find according to the Bible, God is the one who plan what you will do in the future or tomorrow. Like the, uh, Pharaoh, God say, I have appointed Paul of Pharaoh for this purpose, to display my power to the whole world. I have hardened him so that he may be able to refuse. So he, he said that to Moses. And in the same case, Paul repeats in Romans chapter 9, and he say, God say, I have appointed Pharaoh to display my power. That is why I harden him. Imagine God, he know what you will do. He know he will harden you. And he know he will kill your firstborn because he have already handed you. <laughs> and in the same case, he know he know you will believe in Jesus and you will go to heaven. According to what Paul is saying in the same Roman chapter nine. So he have appointed you before he created the one that you will be safe and go to heaven. And the other he created for the day of destruction. Another verse says that some he created to favor, and the other he created for the day of destruction. So, those who claim that you are born again, they believe in Jesus. Maybe you think you believe in Jesus, preaching, praying, but God had already planned 
before the world was created, according to the Ephesians, that you are the object of destruction. So you don't go to hell whether you believe Jesus or not. Maybe you see us as if you are going to hell. But maybe God created us with the purpose. We are going to heaven. According to what some verses say in the Bible. So God had already had planned if he exists. Which does not make sense to us. Thank you all for those excuses <clears throat> that we get from Christians on why God is hiding. And um, by the way, let me still man that point on free will. If God cares so much about free will, why is it that he decides to play favorites for certain people, as Maurice had highlighted? You see, we, we only pick the examples that portray God in a positive light. And, and not we, by the way, but uh, Christians. The ones that portray God in a positive light, those ones we say that it is God, but if it, they portray God in a negative light, then it is free will, right? So it is it's cherry picking, classic cherry picking for those individuals. Another excuse I have had is that there exists abstract concepts like mathematics, you know, okay. yes, <laughs> you cannot you cannot detect mathematics or thoughts, the thoughts in your head, you cannot, you cannot see them. So they say <clears throat> that God follows the same format. And to that I would respond that that is not the God described in the Bible. The God described in the Bible does at times show himself visibly to human beings. The burning bush was one classic example. All of the miracles in the Old Testament and the New Testament were examples of God not hiding. So they cannot use such analogies and examples to uh, cover up for this hiddenness. Now, let's look at the other side of the story where we have Christians who claim that no, God is not hiding. God is very real. To me in my life. What are some of the examples that they give on how God is visible to them, that God is real to them? What are some of the examples and how would you respond to those examples that they give? So what I will respond about it, I will respond by saying this. For example, you pray in God to give you to give you a job. Then you go for an interview. When you get that job, you end up saying, God have intervened and you have get that, you got that job. So that is how they, they term God as if he's doing the, something to them by answering those prayers without knowing that it's a matter of probability or it's just a, a reality thing because they are the one who have presented themselves well in the interview. Or, the, or someone who know them have, have, have made a connection for them to be hired in that. Other thing is that you pray for something, and by coincidence, you find that result, or you get that something. So you end up thinking it's God. That is how they feel as if God is answering their prayer when it's, when it's just a coincidence. And I, again, I, something think because they have emotion. For example, when you read the Bible or the Quran, you feel some emotion as if you are connected to God emotionally. So you end up thinking it's God. Forgetting the same emotion you can find it in in value ceremony when you are very close to the deceased person. Mm. So they or alcohol, yes. Mm. So they they misunderstand that. When it comes to value, they call it is just money. But when it comes to church, they term it as Holy Spirit. Mm. But it, their experience is just the same. Can I continue? <coughs> So, I'm even putting my points. I think God was giving me the point right now. He's hiding. <laughs> He's hiding. <laughs> so, yeah. I think, <clears throat> I normally say, if, if you really think that you're seeing images, that God is showing you, is, is manifesting himself to you, and you're physically seeing himself, you need to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> You need to see a doctor. And I normally say this and people take it like it's insulting. Mm. But <clears throat> there's a very thin line between you and someone who actually needs to see a psychiatrist, which is probably you. 
Uh, so if you ever think you see these images and uh, God is speaking to you and not everybody else, please look at it. Um, that is now. Yeah, I just want to add, uh, as, far, as far as scientists know, it's a human mind that creates thoughts. As we know right now, it's a brain that creates those thoughts. So good and evil are in our brains, which means God and devil are in our brains, which means heaven and hell are here on earth. It, it depends on your thoughts. You make heaven and hell by your thoughts. Yes. So uh, the, these Christians who, who tell uh, us that, I don't know, I have experienced God in my life, I have experienced Jesus in my life, uh, and when I ask why, I say I, I wanted, I don't know, I wanted a husband and I prayed to God and gave me a husband. I wanted a job, I prayed to God and, and I got a job. But no, the question is, are you the first person to get that to get a job? Muslims, they also, they, 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 they can also be asked, how did you get this job? I prayed to Allah and he gave me a job. Someone who is in China, they, they also got a job and when you ask them, uh, how did you get this job? They said, I just went for the interview, I prepared. And I got the job. So telling us that uh, you 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 pray to to I don't to to whoever this God is, and then you exp you express it through praying and then going for an interview and getting a job, you are, you are lying to us. You have not experienced any any God. It's just that you are lucky to get that job, and then because you can't explain it, you said, oh, it's yeah, God. Uh, and by the way, you, you are not the only one, the only person who prayed before that interview. They, there are like 10 or 15 people who prayed before they came to that, to that interview. <laughs> um, also, another thing, confirmation bias will always show you what you want to see. Like, people believe what they already believe. Like, you just need something to confirm that. Say, those people who believe in witchcraft, they'll see those examples manifesting, but it's not that it's there, it's because you believe it, so you'll see those things, those experiences that show you like, oh yeah, that affirms what I already believe. So, um, people say that it's God who's done one, two, three, but no, you actually had to put in the work to be able to get the result. So we can't really like give it, give credit to an invisible being in the sky because numbers don't lie. And 98% of the world is in poverty. So like when you're being gray ticked or blue ticked, like why is the world in poverty? Well, whereas 99% of the prayers are about financial prosperity. So why is either God is sadistic, is gray ticking us, is uh, blue ticking us, or he <laughs> Just doesn't exist. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <clears throat> to stimulate to to steal man, what Alvina said, and normally ask yourself: Is either God does not exist, or is brutalizing us, or maybe he exists but he's very sarcastic? <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> because if you look at it, <clears throat> look at the nature of prayers. Where in the world are more prayers offered? In Africa or in Western Europe? Yet. Where are African prayers being answered? In Western Europe, people in Africa are praying for money, for prosperity, for disease. People in Western Europe, they are closing churches. The prayers that are being offered here are being answered in Europe. So maybe God is there, but he's very sarcastic. He's like, hmm, let me see how this one goes. One other example I would give of um, how people claim that God is real, that he's not hidden, is of recovery let's say somebody had some sort of addiction there's a friend of mine who reached out to me the other day and told me that he used to take drugs a cocktail of drugs but god reached out to him through a nigerian pastor in a revival meeting and after that he has never smoked another blunt but you see that was just one and a half months ago that's a challenge to kenyan pastors <laughs> yeah but in, in response to that, I would simply say that he's attributing it to the wrong cause. Addicts stop when they hit the bottom of the barrel and they experience compassion. He was desperate for compassion from a fellow human being. And it just so happened that the person who showed him compassion was a Christian Nigerian pastor and now he's attributing it to him. He is the one who made that, that, that decision to quit the drugs. So it is not 
God who has done it. It is not that he has a relationship with you. It is actually this individual who reached out to you and showed you compassion. Now, I'd like us to answer this question on the idea of a relationship. Now, uh, uh, piggybacking from that example of people who say that they have a relationship with God. They experience God through the relationship that, that they have with him when they pray and he answers, when they read the Bible, when they sing and um, they feel the spirit within them or when they get that recovery from an addiction, they claim that it is God. So uh, at, at the heart of it is the essence of a relationship. They claim that they have a personal relationship with God. How can you have a personal relationship with an invisible thing? But I, I, if I may ask you guys, what are the traits of a relationship? If you have a relationship with uh, a girlfriend for the men or um, a boyfriend for the women, I don't know, maybe there's some gay yes, people here. Yes. <laughs> I'm assuming because I know you. <laughs> I know you, but if, if, you are, if you are gay, of course, it, it applies to the same sex. What, what are the examples, what, what are the traits of a relationship? Even, even the relationship that you have with your parents, your siblings, family members, your children, what are some of the traits that, uh, that characterize those relationships? And would you apply those traits in the relationship that people claim to have with God? Yeah, do those, do those traits apply to the relationships that people have? Yes. I tend to think uh, people have been gaslit to believe there is a relationship between them and an invisible God because in a relationship, action is supposed to match words. And the problem is, if God is love, I see no love. They just imagine someone loves you. But if you really look at them, most people are suffering, yet they still believe God loves them. Two, in a relationship, there is caring. You just buy a bland new car and then you are crushed and reduced into nothing. God is caring. <laughs> How is that caring? Mm -hmm. In a relationship, there, should, there shouldn't be emotional abuse. If you play for something, you should get it. But in this relationship, personal relationship between Christians, and the God is that it's, it, it seems more of emotional abuse that you could play for something and then say, I, for, let me give you a good example. You pray to be pregnant, maybe you've been struggling and then you get pregnant. And then uh, kidogo kidogo, what happens is that you miscarry. miscarry. All the baby dies, or you die together with the baby where you are, where, where you are have, uh, delivering. Mm. What kind of a relationship is that? If really it exists, that is pure sadism. I, I, I completely disagree with this personal relationship thing. There is nothing like a relationship between a human being and a deity. People are just gaslit to believe so. But if they really think about it, there is nothing. Thank you. Yeah, just to add on that. Um, the way I discovered that, I, you know, the relationship I see <clears throat> between Christian and God if there exists the imagined relationship, I realize I cannot have that relationship for two reasons. Number one, if that relationship is real, it's the way the, the most Christians are suffering, especially in the global south, then that relationship is BDSM. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, the reason I realize you cannot have a relationship with the God is because I'm straight. <laughs> God is the father and he has a son. Uh, already. And nothing more. Uh, if there was a God and the daughter, maybe I would consider. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so we need first of all to understand the kind of relationship. Relationship as we have he had is interacting mm -hmm. with one another. Speaking, caring. So you need something, I help you. I need something, you help me. So if there is any relationship between me and God, I could expect some caring from him, or I care him if I can be able to see him. But what we normally see is just the emotionally. We think that there is a relationship when there is none. So for example, I had a pastor who say, without Jesus you are nothing, and you must have a personal relationship with God. Then after a few weeks, he came and asked me, he asked me for some, some money. 
Kristo. You say without Jesus you are nothing. Mm-hmm. I don't have Jesus, so I'm nothing. <laughs> you have Jesus, you have everything. Why ask me for Money. help? <laughs> so, and he was very angry. I thought, it's you who claim that. So I'm just using what you say. Come on, Dr. Bill, get a quarter thou. Yeah. <laughs> so all money belongs to you guys. <laughs> they are God owned everything. Yeah. And yet you are coming to ask me for her up when your father is very rich. Not rich, own everything. He can even take everything I have and give it to you. Including <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to conclude, eh? So if you believe in God, just please know that God is, is in your brain. And then if you do something good, give yourself credit. Yeah. There's good in you. Yeah. So don't give it to God. Give yeah. it to yourself. Because mm-hmm. you're special with good qualities. Yeah, yeah. Or if you do something bad. Yeah, give yourself yeah, credit. Yeah, you're yeah, evil. Yeah. Don't say it's the devil. Just say it's, it's you, you with your weaknesses. Mm. Take responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Take responsibility for your right mm-hmm. and your wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so to wind up also, uh, the Bible says which which father when his son asks him for bread, he gives him stones. It's the same way Christians call the, this God their father. And every day they, they pray, they pray to, to, to him to, 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 give them, to give them a lot of things. But every day in, in this country or in this continent of Africa, people every day are, are crying about the, the economy. Can't you just pray to this God so that he can... Uh, he, he can Stop giving, stop, uh, <laughs> stop giving you stones and then <laughs> and heal your okay and stabilize your economy. Uh, uh, I, I, or uh, you or th- those prayers that you pray that are being answered in Europe, as uh, one of my colleagues says, we are praying for God to stabilize your economy, but it's, God is stabilizing the, the economy of Europeans <laughs> and the, and Americans and in China, but yes. not you. But yet those Chinese people they are not even praying to that God you, you, you are praying to. Um, so, um, we always say that man create, uh, God created man in his perfect image, but that's not the case. It's man who created God in his own flawed image. So we put this God characteristic with all our weaknesses, all our strengths, everything that is there. So if he was as powerful as people claim he is, he wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any need to defend him by us mere mortals you know it would just be obvious if you're powerful like you see it you see the power you know so yeah let's give autonomy to everything let's not just give autonomy to an invisible being in the sky yeah i'm so glad that all of you have explained how paradoxical it is to claim to have a relationship with something that is undetectable This entire topic of the hiding God is just an indication of what the human imagination can do. All the qualities, all of the credit given to God can be explained by a more rational reason. Something that is empirical, something that can be detected. And most importantly, this God cannot be seen. Now, take the example of me who tells you that I have a pet dragon in my closet. Then you tell me, Docus, let's see the pet dragon. And I tell you, oh, no, you cannot see the pet dragon because it's invincible. And we ask you, okay, then let's hear the pet dragon. You're like, oh, you can't hear from the pet dragon because it is inaudible. Then I tell you, okay, let's put a piece of paper in front of the pet dragon so that it blows into it fire because dragons breathe fire and and we will prove that the pet dragon exists then you tell me oh no it only releases infrared that can't burn paper and there i will tell you that you have made that pet dragon up that's the exact same thing i would tell anybody who claims that god exists He is invincible, he cannot be touched, he cannot be talked to, he cannot be seen. You might as well have a teddy bear with you. In fact, a teddy bear is a better relationship to have than with God because at least the teddy bear can be seen. This God cannot be seen. My friends, 
that marks the end of our discussion today please remember to comment below remember to subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time on another topic around the ideas of belief have a good day